We are less than one week away from not just the launch of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, but also the Game Awards, hosted and produced by Jeff Keighley. Over the past few years, he's truly made this show the video game version of the Oscars. But we all know how my namesake Joseph Ferris feels about that. Fuck the Oscars, you know? <laughs> Fuck the Oscars! Fuck you! Thanks to Jeff and Reggie fils being buddies, Nintendo has had a solid presence at the Game Awards ever since they showed off Breath of the Wild gameplay for the first time in 2014. Now we did release a video a few months back explaining why and how Metroid Prime 4 could make an appearance at the show, but now the list of possible Nintendo announcements have been extended a bit. If you've been on the internet all this past week, you've probably noticed some gaming outlets and YouTubers talk about an HD Nintendo Switch port of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. That's because during a performance of the Symphony of the Goddess in Osaka, Japan, series producer Eiji Anuma took the stage and said these words. I know what you're thinking. Skyward Sword for Switch, right? And the crowd responded with applause. Now, there may not be a video of this exchange, but many people in the crowd tweeted out that this indeed happened. A few days after this occurred, Eurogamer wrote to Nintendo for comment, and a PR person responded with, At this time, we have no plans to release The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword on Nintendo Switch. <laughs> Okay. Obviously, if the game is in the works, Nintendo already has plans on when and where they want to announce it. So of course they're going to deny that it exists for right now. Besides, the same thing happened with the Nintendo DS Lite. Two days after they said it wasn't going to happen, it happened. And if Eiji Aonuma is hinting at it, then it has got to be in the works. It's wise to trust the words of a developer more than a PR person who is being told what to say from the higher-ups at Nintendo. No disrespect to those who work in PR, though. We work with them all the time, and they're lovely people. Anyway, if Skyward Sword is coming to the Switch, when will it be announced? When will it be released? And how will it be ported? Chances are, if Aonuma hinted at this game now, then it's probably going to be announced soon, in either a Nintendo Direct in, like, January or so, or sooner at the Game Awards. We see the latter as the most likely option, as it's less than one week away and it wouldn't be the first time Nintendo announced an HD port at the event. Just last year, they announced the Switch ports of Bayonetta 1 and 2 before dropping the bomb with 3. There is no doubt in our minds that Nintendo will do the exact same thing with Skyward Sword, announcing the HD port on the Nintendo Switch and then dropping a teaser for Skyward Sword 2 Electric Boogaloo. I'm just half kidding there. Skyward Sword HD would make for a good Game Awards announcement, as Zelda has had a solid presence at the event. But we will be honest, if it was the only announcement from Nintendo, we would be a little bummed out. If there's anything we want to see from them, it's a game that we know nothing or very little about. Like Bayonetta 3, Metroid Prime 4, or whatever the hell Star Fox Grand Prix is. And you know what? Who's to say that Nintendo has to only make one announcement? Jeff Keighley recently said that there will be more than 10 games announced at the Game Awards. And technically, Metroid Prime 4 and Bayonetta 3 have already been announced. So if Skyward Sword HD is the new announcement and we get something about Bay or Metroid, then fine by us. Even better, what if they pull a Champion's Ballad and announce that Skyward Sword HD is available to play on that night? Oh wait, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is coming out that night. So that is completely out of the question. However, an early 2019 release might still be possible, perhaps February or March just like Twilight Princess HD was on the Wii U. But now it's time to address the elephant in the room, the fact that this is Skyward Sword we are talking about here, one of the most divisive Zelda games in the series. You'll find people who absolutely despise it and claim it's the worst Zelda game ever, and on the other side people who love it and dub it their favourite mostly because of the story. Both sides have perfectly valid reasons for their feelings. For one, Skyward Sword is notorious for holding your hand, and we mean notorious. Within the first hours of the game, you couldn't walk 10 feet without the game pausing to tell you what to do. Then of course there are the motion controls, and the game is designed entirely around them. To be fair, they work pretty well for the most part, but they work against people with disabilities and those simply wanting to just relax and play a game. I personally didn't mind them too much, but I don't blame people who did. 
Let's not forget that the game was very linear by Zelda standards, any of the Silent Realm missions were awful, and your companion Fi was incredibly annoying. And yes, it is pronounced Fi. When it came to the overall story, Fi was a great character, but if you're judging her by the gameplay alone, she makes Navi look like a monk who's taken their vow of silence. She will interrupt the game to remind you that your batteries are low, your health is low, the chances of you succeeding are low in a scenario where you will more than likely succeed anyway because it's a video game. She's an incredible nuisance, and that's a shame, because she actually has a great moment at the end of the game, which we won't spoil here. You see, despite all the flaws, Skyward Sword is an essential game that every Zelda fan needs to experience, and this is mostly due to the story. It is without a doubt one of the best stories in the Zelda franchise, taking place at the beginning of the timeline and with the absolute best relationship between Link and Zelda. Personally, I was near the point of tears during the final act of the story. It's that good. To me, putting up with the annoying parts of Skyward Sword made the great parts of it that much better, and it became one of my favorite Zelda games upon completion. However, the annoying parts of the game are still annoying, which is why an HD part on the Nintendo Switch is all the more worth it. Previous HD ports have made adjustments to the gameplay to make it less annoying. In Wind Waker HD, for instance, sailing was made faster with the Swift Sail and the Triforce Shard Quest was made easier compared to Wind Waker on the GameCube. Twilight Princess HD had more subtle improvements, like the climbing speed being increased and the amount of Twilight Tears you needed to collect. Skyward Sword HD would have to make significantly more and difficult improvements. Since a ton of the game's combat, puzzles and dungeons are designed around motion controls, it would be a daunting task trying to redesign them for traditional controls or remove them completely. On one hand, the Joy-Cons have motion controls that are way better than the Wii Motion Plus, so why not just use those? Well, then you have the problem of not being able to play the game in portable mode unless you want to wave your hands around on the airplane like an idiot. Now there are some Switch games that require you to play them portably, like 1-2 Switch, so maybe Skyward Sword will only have to be played docked. But we don't want that to happen. It would be a lot of work to fix the motion controls in Skyward Sword, which is probably why it's taken them this long to release an HD port to begin with. Fortunately, there are easier problems to fix, like reducing the amount of time Fi has to repeat things that you've just seen on the screen, completely eliminating the need for dowsing, and maybe only do one Silent Realm mission instead of three. Actually, the Silent Realm missions weren't that bad, but there are other filler stuff like the songs and so on that were more tedious at the end of the game. Oh, and speaking of free times, how could we forget about the Imprisoned? Yeah, how about one battle? Or none, we are fine with that too. In conclusion, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword is a flawed Zelda game, but it's still an amazing one behind all those flaws. This is why an HD remaster or remake on the Nintendo Switch is necessary. The story, dungeons, and music in this game should not be missed, and it's a damn shame that many people did miss out on it because of the issues previously stated. I mean, I didn't even play this game until 2014, three years after it came out, so it took me a while to play it as well. We hope that if Skyward Sword HD is indeed a thing as Aonuma teased, then they have taken as much time as they need to make it as accessible of a game as possible to everyone. And in a perfect world, we would see a Zelda HD bundle on Switch that includes the ports of Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and Skyward Sword. But that probably won't happen because Nintendo knows they could sell each game individually and make more money that way. Though, we would absolutely love to be wrong. But we want to hear from you. Do you think Skyward Sword HD is happening and will be announced at the Game Awards? Or are you scratching your head wondering why they would even bother with a Switch port? Sound off in the comments section below, or tweet them to us at Common Realm. And speaking of Game Awards, we will be live-streaming them outside of the Nintendo New York store where they're having the launch event of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Be sure to tune in, and if you're in the area, come say hello! I'll also be at the SAC Gamers Expo in Sacramento, California if you'd like to come by. So visit SACGamersExpo.com to find out more. 
Now then, be sure to click that thumbs up button if you like this video, and if you're new, subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when we upload another video regarding The Legend of Zelda, and also help us reach 175,000 subscribers. We want to thank every one of you for helping us surpass 170,000 subscribers, and now we go forward on our way to 200,000. Next up is 175,000, and we are on our way there. We'd also like to thank our patrons, including world producer Kenyatta Ali, for all the contributions to the realm. Be sure to visit patreon.com slash common realm to find out how you can join the ranks in exchange for some awesome perks. That's all for today girls and guys, we will see you next week for the game awards and the launch of Super Smash Bros Ultimate.